Good evening, Pocatello, and good evening, America. Lots of crazy stuff has happened today. A lot of new uh, revelations on the uh, Benghazi terrorist attack. Um, for some background, I guess the background story on this is in the midst of the 2012 presidential election, there was a terrorist attack in Benghazi, Libya, on September 11th. Now, the day at the morning after this uh, terrorist attack, because it happened in the evening, but by morning the president came out to speak to the American people, and uh, he told everyone that this. Uh, attack, whatever it was that happened at the, uh, the consulate in uh, Benghazi, Libya, he told everybody that it was a YouTube video that uh, sparked a, uh, a protest. So it wasn't a terrorist attack at all, according to the president. Now, we later learned that it was a terrorist attack, and apparently our government knew it was a terrorist attack the entire time. Now, questions that people have is uh, why, you know, why tell, why hide the fact that it's a terrorist attack? You know, that doesn't that doesn't make any sense. Um, and a lot of answers have come out since then. Um, here's for one thing, we know this. All right. Um, if you guys remember 9-11-2001, the terrorists attacked our Twin Towers. They flew airplanes into it, and they attacked our Pentagon. And thousands of Americans died, and it was a terrible day. On that day, President George W. Bush promised. He made a promise that a terrorist attack will never again happen on American soil. And he kept that promise. After 9-11, there was not one terrorist attack on American soil for the rest of President Bush's term. Not another attack happened on his watch. President Barack Obama become, becomes president. There's, um, there's the terrorist attack in Benghazi, Libya. And that happened in the middle of the election. And uh, our consulate was on American soil. That, that is American soil. And the president did not want us to know that there was a terrorist attack on American soil on his watch. He knew he wanted to be reelected. He wanted to be president of the United States for a second term. So he thought it was in his best interest to hide the facts to go out with this YouTube story, to tell people that it was just a protest. It was a bunch of people angry about a YouTube video. But we now know that that wasn't the facts. He even sent Hillary Clinton out there. Hillary Clinton claimed over and over and over and over again that it was a YouTube video that, that sparked this violence this protest. Um, she lied. I mean, we now know that the government, the government knew that this was a terrorist attack from the beginning. Um, today, there were some whistleblowers that came out to, to uh, share this information with us. Um, they had some very credible testimonies, and these men were in Benghazi at the time of the attack. Um, and I'd like to uh, share with you part of what happened today in, in the hearing on uh, Benghazi as these whistleblowers testified. Mr. Hicks, who is Beth Jones? Beth Jones is the Acting Assistant Secretary for Near Eastern Affairs. 
at the State Department. I want to read an excerpt from an email she sent, and you were copied on it. And by the way, Mr. Chairman, for our colleagues who like to trumpet bipartisanship, this would be a wonderful opportunity to demonstrate it. Some of these emails, even though they're not classified, have not been released, Mr. Chairman, including the one that I'm going to read from. So for my colleagues who trumpet bipartisanship, this would be a wonderful time to prove it. This is from Ms. Jones to you, to counsel for Hillary Clinton, to Victoria Newland, to Mr. Kennedy, near as I can tell, to almost everyone in the State Department, and I'm going to read from it. I spoke to the Libyan ambassador and emphasized the importance of Libyan leaders continuing to make strong statements. By the way, Mr. Hicks, this email was sent on September the 12th, the day after Benghazi, and several days before Ambassador Rice's television appearance. And I'll continue. When he said his government suspected that former Gaddafi regime elements carried out the attacks, I told him that the group that conducted the attacks, Ansar al-Sharia, is affiliated with Islamic terrorists. Let me say that again, Mr. Hicks. She told him, the State Department, on September the 12th, days before our ambassador went on national television, is telling the ambassador to Libya, the group that conducted the attacks, Ansar al-Sharia, is affiliated with Islamic terrorists. Mr. Hicks, I want to know two things. Number one, why in the world would Susan Rice go on five Sunday talk shows and perpetuate a demonstrably false narrative? And secondarily, what impact did it have on the ground in Benghazi, the fact that she contradicted the president of Libya. So there you have it, folks. We know, we know that the government knew that it was a terrorist attack on the night of Benghazi. In fact, the State Department's come out and said we knew within 24 hours. So why? Why did the president, why did Hillary Clinton, and why did Susan Rice go out there weeks after the attack, still blaming the whole thing on this YouTube video and saying it was a protest. I mean, Barack Obama, you know, two weeks after the attacks, stood in front of the UN, the United Nations, and told them that this was a protest that was sparked by a YouTube video. I mean, that is a straight up I mean, that is, like this guy said, that is demonstrably false. And the fact that they'd keep perpetuating that story, even though the facts were clear that this was terrorism. Um, I'm going to have you guys uh, bring in some calls. Um, I'm going to bring up the call screen here, and you guys could call in here, and um, we, could, we could discuss this. So, uh, and also, Hillary Clinton, she said the same thing, blamed it on a YouTube video multiple times. Where did they get this YouTube video business from? Um, it doesn't make any sense to me other than they were trying to hide something. They were trying to hide the facts. I believe that there was a massive, um, there was a massive government cover-up here. And, um... That's kind of scary, to tell you the truth, that our government would hide something like this from us just because they want to keep their power. Um, but one thing I'd say... oh, Hello, welcome to the Ben Gregerson Show. Hello. You know, I was listening to your comments, and, and uh, you know, I'm just hoping this will all come out. It didn't look to me like they... They got enough information today. They're probably going to have to go back and do some more, you know, uh, questioning and let the people talk a little bit more. But, boy, I hope they get it uncovered. It's just a big mess. Yeah, me too. And there's, you know, there's more There's more people out there that, that have information. And um, I've heard tonight that there was a fourth whistleblower that was blocked. 
she wasn't allowed to testify because of uh, all kinds of government regulations and red tape and they weren't giving her the she she had filled out the files and everything so she could testify but they didn't accept them so I don't know but I I actually think a lot of information was uh, revealed today I mean one thing we know is that there we know this for a fact now that there was a whole team a whole team of military personnel that were ready to go they were ready to go in there and save the ambassador and and uh, they an order came to them that told them that they couldn't go we know that for a fact now because one of the whistleblowers was the guy that was in charge of that operation and uh, that order came to him that uh, that the guys couldn't go in there Hillary Clinton um, at the funerals of these men that died these four men you know and they had the flags draped over their caskets she stood there and looked at the families in the eyes and she told them that this was a protest sparked by a YouTube video she lied to the families at the funeral And she knew what the truth was. Hello. Welcome to the Ben Gregerson Show. I'd like somebody to explain why Nixon got impeached for almost doing the same thing. But during Watergate, nobody died, and the president lied and was caught. Uh, if this turns out to be true, should this president be impeached? And I'll let you, you answer that. I think so. I think that this would be cause for impeachment, and it's a huge scandal. I mean, once something like this happens, I think a president has lost the right to govern. Um, the only difference between this and Watergate is that four people died. And I'd also tell you something else that was different. In, Water, in Watergate, Nixon wasn't providing cover for terrorists. See, here's the, here's the sick thing about this, folks. Is these terrorists are guilty. They are guilty for killing our ambassador and these other men. All four of these guys. And we got the president out there saying that it was a bunch of protesters. Even though we know the facts that terrorists killed these men. So why is the president providing cover for terrorists? By blaming it on... Um, protesters that had nothing to do with this. Who knows? It's really, I think it's quite disturbing. And uh, this man, this whistleblower we were listening here, um, he had a conversation with uh, Hillary Clinton while all this Libya stuff was going on. And uh, Hillary asked him, she said, what's going on? What's going on down there? And he told her, we're being attacked. The terrorism was going down. He didn't tell her anything about a YouTube video. Nothing. But yet, Hillary Clinton still went out there and promoted the YouTube story. Hello. Welcome to the Ben Gregerson Show. anything more than what your dad said? You're a dickhead. You know that? Well, my dad didn't say any of these things. Thank you, and thank you're being very rude. You know, guys like that who can't come in here and uh, speak with an intelligent con conversation without um, insulting people, I think that they know that they're wrong. Um, if they can't come in here and have an intelligent conversation and all they have is insults. Hello, welcome to Ben Gregerson Show. You don't who You're says? An Let's. Idiot. You're a fucking idiot. All right. You know what? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna allow that kind of language to go over the air. Um, if he can't come in here and and have an intelligent conversation um, without swearing and mocking me and other people, then uh, I'm not gonna. Uh, 
I'm not going to allow this guy to be on the air. So if you call in, don't call in and start swearing and cursing and and being rude if, if you want to be on this program. Let's, let's switch gears here. Let's talk about what's happening here locally in uh, going on locally here in town, Pocatello. About two weeks ago, um, Mayor Roger Chase announced that he was going to run for mayor again. Um, here, here's my thing. Why would we want Roger Chase to be mayor again? I mean, the way I see it is our economy sucks, as it currently is, and Roger Chase was a man. He was a man that belie believed, and he even wrote this in the newspaper, that our economy should grow no more than 1% a year. An economy that grows at only 1% is an economy that moves like a turtle. That's the slowest economy anybody could have. And during his time in office, as mayor, the economy only grew 1% a year. During these tough economic times, why would we want that? That is, that is my question. Not to, men, not to mention the fact that there's never been a tax that Roger didn't like, especially fees, which is a tax without, it's raising taxes without it going out to the voters. Hello, welcome to the Ben Gregerson Show. Uh, why don't you run for mayor? Who knows, uh, maybe what I... What platform would you do that? Who knows, maybe I will someday. No, why don't you do it now? Why don't I do it now? You're talking about the mayor is not good, so do it now. Stand up. Well, you know, there's things that I got going on in my life right now, and I don't know if I want to do it. In your life right now, you're a dickhead. Hey, you know what? You need to stop calling the show, okay? All right. I don't know what's with this guy. You know, why can't we get somebody else calling in here? You know, I'm sure he's a good gentleman. I mean, everybody's a good person. Um, sometimes we do dumb things, you know. But I believe that everybody could change their ways. Um, and I, I truly do believe that. And um, I pray that that this guy will change will change his ways and that he'll become a better man. Um, him calling on here and insulting me is not is not a very nice thing to do. It's not a very gentleman, gentlemanly thing to do. Speaking of Roger Chase, um, how many of you guys remember that he wanted to raise taxes on rain? He wanted a rain tax rain that nobody owns. He also wanted to tax people's roofs. Why? Because rain water hits the roof and drips off of the roof. That's the stupidest tax I've ever heard of. And uh, Roger, it seemed like he was just had all kinds of excuses just to raise taxes. Um, and to create new taxes. I also remember the the, the, the whole Torina thing down here. Um, he wanted to renovate the whole Torina. Yeah, that's all fine and good. I mean, sure, we'd all want a nicer whole Torino with a big skybox and everything in there. The problem was is he wanted to put all the financial labor on the taxpayers. He wanted to raise our taxes in order to do that. And you want to know something? Our city does not own the whole Torina. The state does. It is the state's responsibility to to fund that whole terrina. Hello, welcome to Ben Gregerson Show. I just had a question. Do you think uh, Vlad's going to be a, a good mayor? Has he been good? Uh, haven't heard much about him. They don't talk about him in the paper very much. So I don't know much about him because they. they 
kind of keep quiet about him. So maybe you can answer that. Well, he's kept taxes down, and I like that. You know, before it seemed like taxes were going up every year under Roger, especially utilities. Because here's the thing, most tax increases, voters have to vote on it, all right? But you could raise fees and utilities without voters having to go out and vote on it. Uh, most voters typically don't go out and vote for a tax increase. Um, and uh, Blad, you know, the taxes, you know, he's been keeping them down. And I think that that's, I think that that's a good thing. Um, for me, though, you know, one thing I'd like to see change in Pocatello, and it's been this way for a long time, you know, even long before Blad, is that uh, it seems like the taxes go up on the people that fix up their house and make their house look nice. Then their taxes go up. It's like they're being punished for fixing up their place and making it look nice. I don't like that. Um, I've actually met people that uh, let their property and their house fall to pieces because they don't want their taxes to be hiked. And uh, I think that's wrong. I think, if, I think in this situation, if you fix up your place, then your taxes should go down. Just to encourage people to fix up their place and make it look nice. Because right now it seems like we're discouraging that. Um, I mean, the way I see it, if, if anybody's taxes are to go up, it should be the people who aren't taking care of their property, that aren't taking care of their house, you know, keeping it looking nice. That's how it should be. Um, but it's not right now, and I'd, I'd like to see that change. But like I said, it's been that way for a long time. It's been that way since before Blad. Um, but I do like that Blad is, has kept taxes down. Um, one thing I'd point about Roger, I, I talked about that that roof tax earlier and that tax on rain. Um, the people, I mean, that, that got rejected, that got shot down. Um, but you know, if Roger becomes mayor again, he's going to try to do it again. Um, or he's going to try bringing some other new tax, some other convoluted thing. Um, but it seemed to me that Roger had an obsession with roofs because when the roof tax failed, hello, welcome to Ben Gregerson show. Oh uh, yeah, I'm the same guy that you don't like. But I didn't say I didn't give, like give you. Give me a minute, give me a minute. All right. Have you, and I've asked you this before, and you've never answered it properly, and I'm gonna ask you again. Have you ever had an original thought uh, yeah, I have them all the time. Most of your life has come from your father's philosophy. No, it hasn't. You have never had an original thought. Yeah, I do. In you fact, I... On this television show, trying to say something that has nothing to do with anything. Oh, who says it doesn't have anything to... An original thought. I think you're the one with an unoriginal thought, sir. In fact coming on here and accusing me of not ever having a, an a original thought. You want to know something? There's actually several things. There's multiple things that I've disagreed with my father on. You know, I've studied into things and looked into things. You know, not all of my influence comes from my father. Um, and how would you know that anyways? Do you live at my house? Have you ever known my family personally? You know, I think it's silly for you to call in on this show and say everything I have is unoriginal. It all comes from my dad, from good old Papa. You want to know something? My dad's a good man, and he's a smart man. And I'd, you know, and I'd stick up for him, and I'd defend him any day. He's been a good father. He's loved me. He's taught me a lot of things. I'm thankful for the way that, that he's raised me. You know, I love my father. 